Good day fellow investors, it's time for your comments again and we have two very interesting comments today. First is about how to handle a 50 bagger and there is a great comment about that. And then what's the value of my research and should the price be lower? Let's start. Before we start, let me just thank you for all the support and the positive feedback I got on the book Modern Value Investing. If you look at the 100 top paid Kindle books under the topic stocks, we are at 23rd place, which is an amazing thing for me. And we are just ahead of You Can Become a Stock Market Genius from Joel Greenblatt. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support and for the great reviews there. If you have read the book, please re leave a review. Perhaps we can enter the top 20 or even the top 10. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go back to the comments. So Vam1718 says, I purchased Amazon at 40 and sold at 45. Yes, yes, I know. I'm thinking, however, that this could be a chance for all of us who missed Amazon, like me. This is the comment on Mercado Libre. Long term, I'm bullish of web commerce and I'm bullish most of South America and Mexico. I believe it's worth taking a small position now. I do remember thinking later on with Amazon that it never pulled back enough to create a good entry point. This may well be as good as it gets for those who wish to go long Mercado Libre. Now, this is what happened with Amazon from when the stock price was 40 till 45. Now it is 1,837. So if you invested, let's say 2% of your portfolio at in Amazon back in 2006, now that 2% would be 50 times higher, so practically 50% of your portfolio. But the problem is here, okay, how can I hold something like this for, what was it, 12 years and just look it go up, go up, especially since like ever. And this is a big, big problem. We all see now Amazon from here till here, it's an amazing return, but there are really few, ex except for Jeff Bezos, who is now the richest person in the world that held onto those stocks for such a long term. So the question is, how can we project ourselves to hold something like that practically forever? And that's the key. Buffett says, my favorite holding time is forever. So you might approach investing like I'm going to take 10, 20, 10% 10 on my returns. You will be happy. You will get a boost from that. But the key is positioning yourself in creating a portfolio for the long term, rebalancing carefully the positions. And then you start building, buying businesses, buying wealth, buying businesses that generate growth that are well positioned and then you start looking at things a little bit differently than chasing the 10 15 percent it's easy to get into that game of chasing the returns a little bit i'm a little bit up i'm a little bit down and that but when if you can shift that mindset to the long term to okay these are the businesses i own i like them and we'll be talking more about portfolio positioning and creation now as I'm preparing a video, a series of videos on how am I looking to prepare to fit, to make my model portfolio that I'm building for my research platform. So this is a big part. Okay, are we holding forever? And then when you're holding forever, you have different assets, you're well diversified over your portfolio, you try to buy cheap, but cheap doesn't mean below book value or low PE ratio. Cheap means cheap in comparison to what can happen like it happened with Amazon. So when you do that, when you think, okay, I'm going to hold it forever, then you think differently about stocks. So on one hand, we have short term gains chasing a lot of energy this spending and then you have okay i'm really looking at great businesses perhaps i buy a few of them per year and i include them in my portfolio over the next 20 years and then i reach great gains and this is exactly what i do in my research platform and Aver has a comment about that so he finds that my research platform fee of 250 49 dollars is too much for those who have just $5,000 to invest. He's in his 20s and then he calculates that just to break even on that money, he would need a 10% return. 
to make more money is 20% just to make a 6% profit. So that's no way the risk reward of that price is good. Now I know that $249 on 5,000 is a lot, but A, I think that the time that I invest, the education that I provide, the analysis that I provide, that you will continue to invest $5,000 per year. So after 10 years, you will be $50,000, $100,000, $200,000. And over the 10 years, you will pay me, let's say, two, two and a half grand, let's say, because you get the price now fixed and I will be raising the price. But that two and a half grand will give you so much data, so much knowledge, so much diversification, so much insight into what's going on in the world of investing that I think I will make you at least 100,000 on that two and a five thousand. So that's a huge return. Think long term. Think well, where will your life go? Think where will your investments go? And think on education also if you have a smaller portfolio and we'll make our best to increase that portfolio so that the fee becomes smaller smaller and smaller another very important thing perhaps on 5000 if you're unexperienced if you don't know a lot in the next crash you might lose 50 percent if you are hedged if you're protected if you know what's going on if you have great assets in the next crash you might not not lose anything so that's 10 years of my fee. So that's also something to think about in the very long term. Again, apply the long, long term perspective on whatever you do with investing in life and your life will be great. And that's really something that we have to again put into perspective. We have the long term. How are we going to hold one stock like Amazon or we're going to think about those few percentages here and there that simply make your mind go crazy. So the message for today is think long term, educate yourself, try to find what really leads to great investment returns. And that's holding a business, finding those businesses that you can hold forever or at least until they become crazy, crazy expensive. Just another note here from Heidi. He is for index fund investing and he says that the best way of investing is nothing but index investing over the long run. And he is against my ideas of having hedges, my ideas of being protected and everything because of the opportunity cost of everything. Now, why am I so much against index funds? Because I think that index funds are okay if you buy them cheap. Index funds are very risky if you buy them expensive. And that's my message. Buy index funds if the price earnings ratio is 5, 10 and they give you 10% earnings return. Not, don't buy index fine funds if the price to earnings ratio is 25 and they give you 4-5% return over the long term. I just think that investors that dedicate themselves to investing can do much better. That's my message. And you can do better by owning hedges and being long other things that give you a better return than 4-5%. That's it. Hedges is always a cost to a hedge if it doesn't work, of course. If it works, then the return is amazing. And that's something each of one, each of us should balance how to approach that. And in the long term, mindless index investing will do good as it did good in the last 35 years, but might also do very bad as it did from 1929, where everybody was crazy, when everybody was crazy about stocks, till 1960 something when index funds came back to the previous levels something like that might happen again and that's what i'm always discussing risk reward risk reward it's all about risk reward when investing thank you for watching looking forward to your comments and i'll see you in the next video